In this tutorial, we're just going to do some object editing. And a lot of these techniques that I'm going to show you in here, I've shown throughout many of the other videos, but since there's over 250 videos, maybe you haven't seen some of them. And so I'm going to kind of group them together in this one video and show you how I work. So a couple things. One is right down here, this Snap During Transform button. Its, it's default is off, so I'm going to turn it on right now. And so when you do that, if you grab an axis like this x-axis, it's snapping on that grid, those grid marks down like that. All right, that's one thing. And then you can also have right here are the type of transforms. So it's going to snap incrementally or to vertices, edges, faces, or volumes. So let's try that. Let's switch it over to vertex. Now for that to work, when you switch to vertex, then you have even more options. Close to center, medium, active, like this. So I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to leave it at closest. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to grab this right here and you can see when I move it well nothing's really working I don't see any snapping going on and that's because if you notice this big circle around here this big white circle up there that's because I also have my proportional editing turned on so I need to turn that off for the vertex snapping to work properly so let me go grab it this time and now you can see it's it's snapping that way as you're jumping between vertices and jumping and it kind of depends on how you have this set like I said center let's see what the center one does in this case yeah well that one's not that's not really a really good example you can actually see it here you can see it jump in steps like that alright so those are things to be aware of I'll go back to increment like I was and I'm going to control Z that back uh, to the beginning and then I'm going to turn my proportional editing back on right here, enabled. And then when you do, you have all these kind of ways for the object to get changed. So we'll do that with, a, say, something else here in a second. Well, but let's go grab a... I'm going to come here into Edge Select mode right there. Press that button. And then the Alt key, if I hold down the Alt key and right-click an edge, it selects all the way around the object. Now you see when I'm rotating it, it's not rotating it around the center. That means I'm going to need to press, I'm going to press the DEL key on my numpad, and that centers it around that right there. So if I'm rotating, I'm rotating directly around the center here. And also, notice what I have set here is you, you can actually see through this object like this, right? Let me see if I have transparency no transparency set though I have that but that's because right in here see this if I turn that off like that now I can only see the front side of the object that's not a transparent object this is just based on selection and what this does this allows me to select things on both sides like for instance if I level this off right here and I press the B key to bound and I click this then I have selected all the vertices and faces on both sides and the edges as well. All right, and I'm going to Control Z that. And I'm going to turn this off, like I mean, on like this. So now it limits it. So it only limits it to this front face. Now when I press B and select those, it's only going to show. It only picks the ones that are visible in the viewport, like that. All right. So that's another little trick. So I'll put it in this mode here, like this. Now once I have this selected like this sometimes you can do all kinds of editing with this now with let me see let me turn off proportional editing just for a second and I'm going to just scale this up on X and Y so I'm going to press S and then shift Z that excludes the Z axis from scaling and then I'm going to move it out and you see it just moves those in and out and that's a nice way to work sometimes if you just want to affect those so I'm going to escape that but now with proportional editing enabled I'm going to do S, Shift, Z, and now you notice its influence is based upon that big wide circle. So I haven't clicked anything yet, but if I take the middle wheel mouse and I scroll it, I'm just scrolling the mouse and you can see the change, the influence, looks like an acorn right there, right? how it affects it in there. So I'll just leave it there, I'm not, and then I'm only affecting the vertices and the edges close to that circle. If I widen it all the way out, then it essentially changes the whole thing. Proportional editing is extremely powerful and a lot of fun. 
You can do a lot of cool things with it. All right, I'll leave it set like that. Now with this in, that's in edge select mode, but you can do the same thing in face select mode. And when I hold down the alt key, I can select a row of faces. Actually, let's do, let's turn this back to there. It's easier to see sometimes. All right, so uh, I'll select those and that actually selects right up to the top. But you notice this is an edge loop. It's a, actually it's a face loop. But it doesn't go all the way around because notice these terminate. This is a sphere initially and there's quads that define these faces. But when it gets up here to the top, it terminates at a triangle. So then it doesn't know where to go from there. All right, so keep that in mind for a second because we're gonna, we're gonna address that issue when we get over to the cube. And then I can also hold down shift and select in the other direction. If I want multiple faces, this goes all the way around. Notice these are quads all the way around. That's the preferred way to work. And if you hold down the shift key and alt, then I can get another row or column essentially face loop all the way around like that. And that's just a great little way to use the scene. Now let's exit that for a second and come over here to the cube here. I'm going to click it and then I'm going to press DEL on the keypad on the number pad centers my view like that then when I'm rotating I'm rotating directly around the center and then I'm going to come up here to the modifiers and I'm going to go grab a multi-resolution modifier now this is used for having literally multiple resolutions of the same object so you can I've done a video if you look under the modifier playlist I have a video in there about that but sometimes I just use it to subdivide it a couple times like this and I'll, and I'll apply it. Usually usually when you're working with the multi-resolution modifier you don't apply it and that way you can switch between different levels but you can see that video separately. I'm going to apply it in this case and notice it kind of looks like a sphere. Right, I'm going to scale it up a little bit like this. And But what differs is that you have these if I go into edit mode with this and I still have face select active I'm going to turn everything off with A and then I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to select. Now I have a face loop that goes all the way around the object. And that's a really useful tool because maybe I'll come up here and hold Shift, Alt. Oops, didn't want that one. There and there. Now I have both of those circling all the way around in both directions. And now maybe use this. I'll use a, um, I don't know, maybe I'll use a random proportional editing on this. And I'm going to just press S. I'm going to scale the whole thing out. You see this randomness based on the size of that. That's the whole thing versus I cut it down to size and then it's only random in there. Random is kind of a tough one. There it is. Kind of, there it is kind of like that. Yeah, we won't use random. We'll use another. That's tough for random. We'll use sharp and do S like this. All right, so you can create these nice, easy edits when you have uh, consistent face loops or edge loops all the way around the object like that. All right, and then when you want to extrude something, I can come over here and just grab this here, and I can extrude it. I could just press E and extrude it. Change this to normal mode. Now E, what is going on? Now let me turn off my transform. <laughs> e. All right, there we go. So in normal mode, now notice it's coming way out there. In fact, that transform was probably, in fact, let's go back and turn that transform back on. I probably just wasn't going far enough out. E, there it is. My snap was turned on like that. All right, so I'm going to turn it back off. But in normal mode, it's really nice because normal means the vector that's perpendicular to the face here. So I'm always extruding out here like this. If I grab this one and if I was in say global mode there's my axis there and I could press E. Well actually it defaults to the normal axis in that case also or I could use in that case I could press a control Z that but I could also do E followed directly by Z and then it extrudes it up this way like that. So it gives you a lot of flexibility depending upon the way your transform orientation is set uh, down here as well and then sometimes when I'm up in here I want to maybe just I want to scrunch that down so sometimes I'll press E and before I do anything I'll just left click into place so I've made a copy of it right there I've extruded it but I didn't move it 
and then now maybe I'm going to press oh I better change it to normal mode based on the way that's looking like that and then I'm going to press S I'm just going to scale that little piece down right there so I scale it right in the center of that here and normally norm, see it's scaling on here I could press it DEL on the numpad there it'll uh, center onto that face right there then if I press E again then I extrude it out that way or however I want like this so that gives you a lot of control and then you can also now I'm going to just d press DEL on the keyboard now I've centered it back onto the object instead of just that individual face like that so and then sometimes I'll just pick multiple faces on an object like this one and this one and you can just scale that let me go into global mode in this case and maybe I'll just say SY SY and it scales that out like this or I could do RZ RZ and I could just spin it around like that now when I'm spinning it I'm spinning it based on this pivot right here so if I change my pivot point that's really going to affect it let's see if I move my cursor over here and change my pivot point to the 3D cursor now when I do say RZ RZ it's going to pivot everything around that cursor like that it changes the modeling so there's a lot of a lot of options to work with and so that kind of just gives you an idea in case you haven't seen any of those little features before and uh, since this video is running way longer than my normal videos I think that's it for now and I'll see you in the next lesson